Good afternoon. Welcome back to another rendition of the BNH Virtual Event Space. Today, we are joined by Ms. Carmen Gonzalez, New York City pet photographer. We're talking about how to get the best pup photos of your pups. I was going to say pup portraits, pup traits, pup, pup photos. <laughs> Do you call them pup traits or is that like the play on words? That's just, that's like the dad joke play on words. You know, nowadays it's for parents, photographer, for everything. So you can call it whatever you want. There it's we very go. We'll... Clear, by the way, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Carmen. It cut off for a minute. Very, very nice to be here. It is a pleasure to have you. We're so welcome, happy to, to welcome you to our little space here. For those of you who have been watching us recently, it's been kind of a theme lately. We're doing the whole pet photography thing. Carmen, I know you got a, had a chance to join us for our little uh, pet photographer webinar last week, and uh, it's, it's going to be similar. But we're going to get Carmen's take on it. One of the things that we love to do here on the event space is get you different points of view. So we're going to dig into Carmen's background. We're going to take a look at some of her images. We're going to find out how she does her thing, how she gets these pups to cooperate, and how she gets those photos like the one we saw that hopefully we're going to be getting some family members, some royalties. We keep showing that photo, right? You know, my brother is probably listening, so he's going to call me and say, he said that you need to give me royalties, so stop. <laughs> Let me stop getting you in trouble. But uh, as our viewers know, we love questions here. So if you guys do have any questions at all, feel free to get them in. Carmen, I want to start back at the beginning. What came first, the photography or the, or the love of pups? The love of pups. I've had dogs since I was three years old. Um, unfortunately, I don't have one right now, but... I simply adore dogs. It's something that I think um, I grew up in Puerto Rico. I grew up and loving the street dogs. Then I had I've had poodles all my life. So I'm um, I'm a dog lover. I, I love them dearly. I you know, I I support a lot of charities because I want to have them get the best life possible. And uh, so that that was first that that started first. And now how long have you been taking? Uh, photos uh of the pups in general in general i started taking photos close to four and a half years okay. um i always had a passion for photography i just never had the time to do it and then at one point in my life after a conversation with my brother i said this is it i'm getting a camera and actually i went to bnh got my camera i went to central park and the first time i went click i was it I was hooked. I was an addict and I have not been able to leave my camera and becoming a pet photographer was uh, really funny because I literally was doing street photography and I started uh, literally stalking people on the street and saying, can I take a picture of your dog? So I started taking pictures of dogs and putting them on my Instagram and I started getting DM. Oh my God, can you send me the photo? I love it. And I'm like, sure. And then people started asking me if I would do uh, sessions. And I'm like, really? And then my best friend and my brother, they both said to me, look, you love photography. You love the dogs. This is what you should be doing. And that's how the decision was made. And that how, that's how I started doing it professionally. So Interesting. See, we, got, we have a little crossover on our paths there because I've been a street photographer. And you know what's funny? I've always found that Whenever I took photos of either people or their pets on the streets, whenever it was a photo of their pet, they always emailed me to get the image. But when oh, yeah. I take photos of people, it's like one out of every hundred people want to see the picture of themselves. <laughs> they don't care. They really don't care. But their dogs, it, it's something different. And actually, um, I started taking just photos of the pups, right? And doing private sessions of the pups and some commercial photography, but just the pups. And now it has turned into another area because now I'm doing family with their pups and I'm getting, you know, engagements with their dogs and I'm getting, you know, so, you know, it's my boyfriend's birthday. Can you do a session of him with his dogs? And so it has turned into a total different thing. You know, it's expanding, but it's expanding beautifully. So. It sounds like, and, and it sounds like you have a real passion for it. So where, where are you at nowadays? Is it just uh, pet photography? Do you, is it mostly dogs that you're taking photos of? That's all I do now. That's all I do. I, you know, I have decided that I wanted to dedicate, uh, you know, 
my time and uh, the rest of my life taking photos of pups. You know, I, I have the best job in the world. Uh, I love my dogs and my models and I'm very blessed after I finish a session, they all call me Aunt Carmen. And, uh, you know, I get these beautiful messages on Instagram and, and just the fact that I spend my day taking photos of doggies sitting down on the floor with them. Come on. Can it get any better than that? I, look, I was going to I was going to make a joke here about my coworkers, but they're that are right off camera. But I think I'm going to steer clear of that and say, I think you do have the best job sitting there taking photos of pups all day. Now, being that it is B&H, you know, we deal in a whole lot of gear. What is your go to camera and lens? Well, I am an icon person. I've been an icon person since I started photographing. I know you like the mirrorless. I have not been brave enough to go there yet. Maybe you and I can have a conversation about this later. Um, but I have an icon D850. And my favorite lens to photograph the pops, it's a 7200, which, as you know, it, it, it's a very powerful lens. And uh, it's just, I, I mean, I can do portraits as, as much as I can do the action shots. And being the fact that the action shots are literally my favorite thing to do, um, I, I try to do everything with that lens because I have gotten very used to it. Um, I have a smaller lens that I use if I need a wider angle to, uh, you know, do the family portraits, et cetera, et cetera. But those are my two to go. Mm -hmm. So you watched the presentation the other day with Kirsty. Correct. And as you already know, as you just said, I'm a mirrorless person. Mm -hmm. What What is it about the DSLR for you? Is it is it something now, obviously the gap has been narrowed um, between DSLR and mirrorless. Do you still feel comfortable? Do you, do you agree with me that mirrorless is going to be the way a, a lot of people are going to start going? You know what? I cannot answer that because I have not tried a mirrorless camera. I probably should go to you guys and get a, a camera and try it and see how it is. But um, I have not had any experience whatsoever with it. Um, so I am not, you know, like in any terms to say why I would do it. You know, mm -hmm. we're go we're going to take care of that for you. We have the wonderful <laughs> Jerry Rooney. When you go to, to B&H. And mm -hmm. for anybody who's watching who has been to B&H and they go by that Nikon booth right off the ramp, Jerry Rooney is the man. You got to go see Jerry at the Nikon booth. He knows everything there is to know. But I'd be interested to see, you know, as, as somebody who is still shooting DSLR, I was and look, I was a holdout for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. It took a long time for me to really be convinced that I was going to go mirrorless. And I kind of forced myself into it. But I'd be interested to see. We're going to have to have you back after you get your hands on a mirrorless and see what you think. That would be fun. Or even if I do it as a, as a test, maybe I go. can come. There know, we go. Give an opinion of what I think. We'll, we'll do a I'm test shoot. I'm a creature of habit. So, you know, I'm like so attached to my camera that it's like just the thought of changing. Uh, I go like, oh, no, please don't do that to me. But I, I am open because I've heard many things, especially from you and, you know, the webinar the other day. Uh, I, I would love to try it just to see. Well, you said it yourself. You're a creature of habit. So uh, let's move into your process in photographing the pups. And I want to know about how much pre-planning goes in. Is it the same for every dog? Is it different by breed or different by client? Listen, it, it really depends on the pup. And, and one of the things I do is when people uh, reach out to me and say, you know, how, how long are your sessions? And you can read it on my website because I have it there black and white. Um, I, I don't do sessions by time. I know a lot of photographers do things by an hour, two hours, you know, this is the way it is. I don't do it because my models are not people that you can say jump, sit, da da da, you know, and basically each dog is so totally different, even if they are the same breed. Um, you know, puppies, adult dogs, big dogs, small dogs, they all have their own personality, which is what I love. And so I talk a little bit with my clients before we do the session just to get to know a little bit about the dog. And then I, I give them a, a couple of hints and, and points that I need them to do prior to coming to the session. The session can be one day, but if, if it's a puppy, we might have to do it in two different dates because I might not have the attention that I need from a puppy to do five, 10 photos. 
because they're like all over the place. I mean, their attention span is 20 minutes max and that's a lot. So um, basically what I do is I tell the parents to take them either to the dog run or for a long walk, brisk walk, but to do it around two hours before the sessions because I don't want the doggies coming with their tongue here. And I don't know if you have noticed, but when dogs get tired or they're hot or they're excited, um, they get wrinkles here and their faces don't look as extreme as as beautiful as they are. So I want them to do that two hours before and give them enough liquid. So when they get to me, they have some energy burned, but they're not looking like they're exhausted. And, you know, so I, I, I tell them to do that all the time. And then when they get to me, then what I do is, and this is one of the most important things, um, I need the puppy to understand who is this crazy woman that's laying on the, on the street or you know on the sidewalk on the grass with this big camera looking at them. Um, because if they get scared or they are a little tentative about me, um, I'm not gonna get that shot. And if you had seen my photos, which is my pride and joy, my pups, they all look happy. And, and it's because I spend um, a, a good amount of time, and it, again, it depends on the pup, sitting down with them on the floor and playing with them. And sometimes they take it too serious that they actually lay down on my back. And I think you have a photo of that, of the dog. They just come and they lay down on my back because they get so comfortable that they go, oh, let's just rest here. Let me let me ask you, Carmen, in, in these images that we're looking at here, how how long into the, the shoot is this? Is this pretty quick into the shoot? Does it take time? Do you have to get acclimated and let the pups also get acclimated to you? Yeah. And, and you know, like like I like I mentioned before, it depends on the pup more than anything. Mm -hmm. I have pups that I have literally taken a photo of them in 10 minutes because they get there. They meet me. They go. They sit down. They lay down. I had one that crossed its, its paws and, and look at me like here I am. And I'm like, oh, dear God, thank God I, I was ready. Um, but most of the time, I do need to give them, you know, the little time to play with me and to smell me and to jump all over me and see the camera. And, you know, that way, um, once we start the session, they're totally comfortable with me. That's you know, so one, difficult. One thing is you have to uh, learn the personality of the pup. And then you have to work around them, making them feel happy and confident and what you don't want is for them to feel like you're forcing them to do something because then it's never going to happen uh you know i i've had dogs that we've had to come back and do the session another day because the first day they were just not into it you know it's like we don't want to do that and so it's okay i tell the parents you know come back um, that photo was in Puerto Rico and that's Milo, uh, a beautiful dog that I took a photo for the calendar I did as a benefit of the street dogs in Puerto Rico. And, uh, as you can see, I have a donut or uh, it's actually a cupcake on my head and I'm balancing the cupcake at the same time. I'm trying to take a photo or a portrait and you know what that means, right? I have to hold that camera like with cement so it doesn't move. But I realized because Milo didn't want to look at me, he was looking at the birds, he was looking at the people, he was looking at everything. Uh, once I put that cupcake in my head because it's his favorite toy, I was able to take the shot. Now, so, it, and most people, you, I know you said you tell everybody to bring them. Do you ever have anybody who just doesn't, it's on the fly and you kind of have to, you know, for someone who might not have their favorite toy or anything to calm them down, do you have any tricks that you have to pull out yes. of your bag? Yes, I actually now I'm bringing a few toys myself. And also um, there are a few apps um, that actually they're free. And one of them is uh, doggy sounds. It's doggy barking, a little dog, a big dog, and also is just squeak toys. And, uh, you know, if you put the volume up 
in, in, in your phone and you click that, the dog is going to go like, what? Because you have different ones. You can't use the same one all the time because they get tired. So you have to keep the element of surprise all the time on them. And then I, I try to tell the parents, look, if you get nervous, your dog is going to be nervous. So just chill. Let's have fun. Uh, let's do this. Usually uh, one of the parents, it's, you know, with the pup. And then I have the other one either sitting next to me on the floor or standing right behind me, especially when I do the um, action shots that I have the dogs running toward me. I have one of the parents standing right behind me because, and then I have them take the little piece of treat and show it to the dog on top of my lens. That way the, the, the dog is looking straight at the camera as he's running to me. Now, how much, how much do you learn about particular breeds? I know it sounds from what we've heard already from you that you have quite a bit of, of knowledge of dogs and that helps in the behavioral aspect. Do you mm -hmm. study them? Do you study the little nuances between different breeds that helps you know how to maneuver them? Yeah, and actually um, I, I try to read a little bit. And also um, that's one of the reasons that I like to talk to the parents before because they, let's say it's a border collie. I know they're extremely bright, um, you know. Um, so I talk to the parents. I mean, when it's a little that soon, you know, those little guys, they think they're Rottweilers. So it's like, you know, they have the personality of an 80 pound dog. So, you know, that they, th there's so much they're gonna give you, you know, because they wanna be in charge. So you kind of have to see who the alpha is gonna be here. And I try to tell the parents not to be that uh, and be like too strict with the dog because then we're never going to be able to get that beautiful, relaxed, smiling, beautiful eyes, you know, portraits of the dogs. What's the number one thing that you would say for someone who's just starting out? What's the most important aspect? Not to force the dogs to do anything. And I think that one of the things with taking photos of puppies or, or dogs is don't go for one shot only because I, I shoot in, on continues and I know that I have a very fast camera and lens and I can do that, but you can also do it on the cell phone. You know, you can take multiple photos because with the puppies, they change their expressions so much so you don't want to miss that. Like, for instance, I was I was telling you before that the photo of Maxi on the beach in Puerto Rico, I took 484 photos to take that one. And, you know, when when you're a parent and I, I've seen it with a lot of parents when I walk around Central Park and I see them trying to take the photo, they kind of go like, sit down, look, look at me. You can't do that because you're bringing negative to the dog. It's just, you know, make them feel comfortable. This is a very nice experience. Sit down on the floor, sit them down in front of you, you know, make squeaking noises, call him funny names, and then just start shooting so you can get that, that good shot of your dog. Mm -hmm. Now, you bring up an, an important aspect of location. Now, I know with people, a lot of times it's like, okay, well... I'm this type of person, so I want to go here. This place means a lot to me. I want to go take photos here. But for animals, how does that factor in? Are you more concerned with a location that has less distractions than an animal or a location that is what you would say like a pretty location? Well, this is New York. Uh, so every location is busy, even if you go to Central Park. I mean, it's, it's a zoo, if, especially if you go in the weekends. Uh, which is when most people are available to take the photos. We usually go very early because of the sun or, you know, late. But I, I do prefer to do it early morning just because it's not that hot and the pups are not extremely tired of, of running around all day long. Uh, and, and I get more attention in, I, in the morning all the time from the pups. But, you know, one of the things I also do with uh, the parents is that I have a conversation and I ask them, what are you looking for? 
um, a lot of them go in my website and they see some of the photos I have taken around New York and, and they go like, oh, I would love to do something like this. I would love to do something like that. Then at that time, because I always tell them to send me a photo of their dog so I can kind of see what I'm going to be dealing with. Um, I try to explain to them uh, that, for instance, you, if you have uh, an eight, 10 pound pup and you want to sit him down in Long Island City and you want to take a photo of the pup with the skyline in the back, you know, it's going to be tricky. I mean, I will try to work around it and do it, but it's going to be tricky because you have a dog that is this big with all the sea in the back. So the dog is going to get lost. Mm. So we all have to be very cautious about, you know, how we do this. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use flash or is it all natural light? No, I, I have to use flash because a lot of the time, uh, as you know, um, I don't have the amount of light that I need, especially if I have a dog that, you know, has a weird color or, you know, I, I don't have like the proper light just going in the dog. <laughs> so um, I try to use uh my speed and and just put it on the camera and and do it there or I, I sometimes i use a strobe if, if i'm doing it in a place that i know i'm going to shoot there and it's really really dark okay that kind of leads into a question we got from john who's joining us on vimeo who was asking any advice you have for preserving detail in the jet black coat of a black lab uh, yes i'm glad that's a very good question because at the beginning uh what's his name john yes john at the beginning, John, I was terrified of photographing black dogs because uh, it, it's it's tricky. The same thing with white dogs; it's it's very tricky. Um, to me, the key to photographing a black dog is um, not so much the amount of light, although you cannot do it in bright sunlight. You have to do it in where either you you find it tree and you can do it underneath or you need to have some kind of shade because if you photograph a black dog in bright daylight uh it, it it's gonna blow i mean it's just gonna be like it's gonna turn into a glow and all this black fur that you're not gonna be able to see the details of the dog so that's number one you know i try to do black dogs in in very specific places and also for me the most important thing is the background you need to have a background that has some sort of color. You know, if you have a yellow or, you know, a green with the grass and a tree behind or something, that way you're going to be able to showcase the dog. I do use a flash when I'm photographing a black dog because I'm on the shade. Um, the flash is not directly on the dog. I have it more inverted up, up so the light comes down a little bit. Um, but I do use uh, uh, that because it has to be a darker space. Now, how I don't know the question, but. Yeah, and John, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to get them in or any of our other viewers for that matter. Um, how does that work with, obviously we talked about this the other day, dogs are all over the place a lot, right? You, you let them run free, you let them kind of do their thing. So how does the shoot go down as far as portraits versus letting them kind of just run and do their thing and putting the telephoto on and catch them in action? Okay, I do my portraits first because I want to have that beautiful image of the dog that it's happy, it doesn't, the tongue is not sideways, they're not panting, they're not drooling. They don't have the lines here, which is very funny because it's almost like a movie actor just having, you know, lines that are going to be noticeable in, in the camera. It's the same thing with the dog because they get a little wrinkly. Um, so I try to do all my portraits first and then at the end, let's get loose and then let's have the, um, the action shots because then, you know, they're running happy and their dog, you know, the tongue can come out a little bit and actually all that uh, brings character to the photo. So if, if anybody out there is thinking of taking a variety of photos of your dog, either do it on two different days or do the first day, you know, the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes, just your portraits. Mm -hmm. And then no. let now, are all the images you're taking from the dog's eye level? I see every photo. I see you. You spend a lot of time laying on the the little carpet. Uh yeah, 
I have a yoga mat <laughs> and I take my yoga mat and actually it was really funny now that you mentioned that I was in the seaport taking a photo the other day and I was laying down literally in the middle of the street and this lady was passing by and she said oh you're that lady that's always laying on the floor and I'm like yeah that will be me so it's a good reputation to have but yeah I spend a lot of time on the ground because I try to get them eye level I think they they feel more comfortable and actually I also think that I can get the best picture of those dogs staring at me or you know even if they're looking a little bit sideways but if, if I have them right in front of me I can get the best out of them mm -hmm. now I want to I want to pull up some of the images we've seen you behind the scenes we've kind of heard a little bit that goes into what you do now I want to pull up we're going to pull up some images here so we're going to start home run right here this is the easiest because i think you said this is your favorite image i think we all love this image talk to us about what went into making this image right here okay so this is max my nephew and uh he absolutely goes bunkers when he goes to the beach this photo was taken in puerto rico where they live uh maxi when we get to the beach he runs directly into the water i mean he just jumps in the water and then comes out and then <clears throat> we started, literally, I lay on the floor and my brother walked down with him. And because I'm his auntie and he loves playing with me, I would just call him once and he would just come flying. And that photo, there's no uh, altering the photo. That dog is that high up the sand. And the thing is that he is 10 pounds. And, you know, I, I had, I don't know, I think I was shooting at, uh, I don't know, a thousand maybe, uh, because he is so fast, but he's 10 pounds, so he was airborne. And nice. I love the photo because you can see the hair, you can see the little grains of the sand coming down, and you can, and more than anything, look at the happy face. I mean. Mm -hmm. and, and for those of you who have not tried to take a photo like this, it is so hard. I've tried to take pictures like this and really getting the positioning right, making sure that the autofocus is locked on. How, how do you, are you a, a for autofocus, are you like a spot focus? How do you focus? I don't do autofocus. I, you know, I, I do kind of like, kind of figure out where he's going to be. And I stay there and then I just start shooting. And if I, I have it. to, it, I move a little bit, but you know, that's the beauty of the camera that you can set it up uh, that it would move with you uh, and we'll find that spot. But that's basically what I do because I, I tend to be very serious about my action shots because I want them to be as perfect as possible. I'm, I'm blown away. I, I, <laughs> man, I, now I'm embarrassed to say, Carmen, that I've tried to take photos just like this with autofocus and have failed miserably so <laughs> you make it look easy it, it, it isn't but um i don't know i think it is because i love it so much uh you know i i just tried and to do the best that i can and i have learned to have a lot of patience i mean for that kind of photo you have to have a lot of patience definitely now what do we have going on here who's this lovely dog this guy is Ivan. And actually, um, I think when I took this photo, he was five or six months. Um, he said that that's on a wire, wire hair, that's on, as you can see. Um, this was in Central Park. And he just like, you know, I love the light, how it's coming to him. And we were able to find, because as you can see, he has this black and cream uh, uh, fur. Um, I found a little spot that I had light on, on the flowers and a little bit on the grass and a little bit of him. But if you can see around him, um, you see that it, there's a darkness. I, I don't have a lot of light on him. And I did use a flash here. Um, and, and you can see he just sat there and stared at me. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he was like, is this what you want? <laughs> What, what's I gotta ask? What's been the best breed that you've had, Jen? Or if they, if you had to say one breed has, is the best to work with out of the, out of all of them, oh or the my. easiest? Uh, you know what? I can't. I just really, really can't. I think that you know they all have their own personality. 
um, and they all bring something different to the table. So every time I do a photo shoot, uh, shoot I fall in love with that breed. Or if, if it's a mutt, I love my street dog. So if I if I if it's a mutt, you know, I love them. So I can't I cannot choose one. Well, equal opportunity. Yeah, and it looks this, like uh, more Central Park. Yeah, yeah. This uh, I love this photo because uh, his name is Crazy Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was adopted and he just literally sat there and stared at me and he said oh, okay I'm just sitting sitting here uh and you know I, I realized that I sent you one of the photos that it's not edited because I think I can see the leash there maybe oh no that's not the leash it's it's uh but no this I, I love this photo as as you can see um I try to blur a lot of the background because I want uh, the dog to be the photo. I just want everything else to complement him, but I want him and his face and those paws and the, those ears to be, you know, the show. And I love the, the color scale here. It's like his, his, the fur matches what's going on in the background of the image. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that I chose that bridge uh, because of his color. And, and that particular bridge, uh, you know, the background, you know, and, and, you know, you have the leaves because this was fall and, uh, you know, you, you can see the floor. It's also, it, it goes with his uh, fur. So I, I think it was perfect, perfect scenario for this photo. Definitely. Well, these two uh, are two favorites. Uh, they are in Puerto Rico and this is uh, what it's called La Plaza de Mel del Mercado. It's like a farmer's market in Puerto Rico. It's very well known in San Juan. Um, and these two uh, are two adopted dogs, okay? They are in Puerto Rico, street dogs are called Satos. And these two are Satos. Uh, the one on the left with the bandana uh, red and white, uh, he was adopted first, and then that photo was taken three months after his brother came to the house. So these are this this is a beautiful photo of the two of them. Look how happy these two guys are. Um, look at the paws because they have the same paws up in the air. I can see their little tongue. They're both like looking at me, smiling. So come on. How long did it take to get them in sync like that, where they're both in stride, both smiling? I took a tremendous amount of photos in, you know, very fast shooting, but I, this actually didn't take that long. This didn't take that long. I, I got them pretty quickly and uh, I didn't know about the pause until I downloaded the photos and I saw them. I went like, oh my God, wait a minute. And if I can just say a little brief about this photo. Um, it was this photo that made me decide to create um, the Polander, which I published last year, uh, this year, I'm sorry. And it's a calendar that 100% of the profits goes to the shelters that saved the life of my models in Puerto Rico. Oh, that's and great. And actually, these two, because they're both adopted, they both came from different organizations. And when I saw their faces and their happiness, I said to the mom and I said to my brother that was there, I said, this is what I want to do. Um, and, and this is how the calendar started. And actually, <clears throat> I'm going to Puerto Rico on the 15th to finalize the calendar photos for next year. So, Oh, that's great. Well, you, we're going to have to find out where we can look at this year's obviously we're we're halfway through the year but you're gonna have to keep us posted for next year definitely oh, uh, you can see it actually in in my on my website it's still there and i'm um, i'm very soon i'm gonna start doing the pre-sale of of the new one but i'm going to puerto rico to finalize the shooting which this year it's going to be all over the island last year was all in san juan oh wonderful that's great yeah i love this <laughs> Okay, this guy, as you can see, it's an old dog. Uh, he was adopted. He has a very, very sad uh, past life, but he was adopted by this wonderful, wonderful mother. 
uh, that has given him uh, such a life. And when I saw him on Instagram and then I saw his face, I went like, oh my God, I need to photograph this dog. And I mean, look at his tennis shoes. Um, look at his denim jacket. Uh, look at his plate shirt. I mean, come on. And the guy, I think, is like 14, 15 years old. Wow. It, Fra Frankie's got more style than I do. More I know. I know. Some of these dogs and their outfits, they put me to shame because I always have a black t shirt and jeans. And then they come with, <laughs> I mean, I had photo shoots that they have five and six different outfits. Wow. People, For the dog. People yeah. love their dogs. Okay, this beautiful girl, it's another of the reasons I did the calendar in Puerto Rico. Um, that was taken in all San Juan, as you can see the colorful, you know, buildings in the back. And, and you know, the, uh, I don't know how you call the alokines, the floor. Um, I can remember the name in English, I forgive Bel me. Belgian blocks. Is yeah. it Belgian blocks? No, they're not. Cobblestone. Cobblestones. Cobblestones, thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I, drew it blank because I'm trying to think Puerto Rico and my brain goes to Spanish. <laughs> so um, this beautiful girl was the same. She just sat there and gave me her first. Yeah, I mean, it's like, hello, here I am. And actually, um, the um, Humane Society of the United States, um, they have a magazine called Animals. And that photo and a story of the calendar, it's coming out in September. So wonderful. There we go. We're back to we're back, back to how it always goes down, right? Yeah, it, it's the way it always is. I mean, and uh, you know, after we finish, I always play with them. I always ask the the parents to give me some treats so I can what I call pay them. And you know, I I try to interact with the pups as much as I can mm -hmm. because it's the only way that I'm going to be able to get those images. Definitely, yeah, we're guiding the dogs into having confidence. And it and and just be, you know, calm. I think it is is the best thing to get photographs. It it sounds like a lot of the advice revolves around really just working with the dogs, getting to know them, getting them comfortable with you, understanding them. And it's less technical than I would have thought. I would have thought that it's a lot more technical on the photography end. But it really sounds like it's knowing your subject. I think there's no different in the technical part as taking a, a photo for a model for a magazine. It, it's mm -hmm. you're, you're doing exactly the same thing. It's just the fact that on this case, it's not like you can tell the model be sexy, jump, dance, do this, do that. I mean, yeah, if I have a dog that I'm taking photos of them catching a frisbee in the air, you know, we have to kind of show them what we're going to do. And then they start jumping because that's the thing about dogs. Once they see that frisbee, they're always, you know, jumping in the air. And I've been able to take amazing shots because of that. But when it comes to the portraits, there's no difference uh, in terms of how you set yourself, except that you're laying on the floor, um, you know, that when you do a photo shoot for a modeling company or, or for a model. Uh, the only thing is that in my case, I don't dictate the rules. I sort of have to see what the dog wants to do and where they are happy. Because, you know, it's like Crash Monkey on the bridge. At the beginning, we were walking around and he didn't want to do anything. But then we got there. It wasn't that, you know, bright. And then we just sat down for a little bit and he just, you know, his mom just sat him there and said, you know, lay down and he lay down and then he was just totally at ease and I was able to take the photo. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go back to the picture of Ivan here because we did have a question regarding which camera and lens do you use to take this image? Um, that was the 7200. Okay. And which, yeah. uh, which, which Nikon body do you shoot on? D850. Okay, so there you go, Luke. So Luke said he, he knew it was a D750 or D850. So we have a D850 and primarily the 70 to 200. Is there any other lenses that are your go-tos? Do you ever use like a 35, anything wider? Uh, well, if you give me a minute, I'll tell you what my other one is. I just, I don't use it that much, so I never remember what it is. But it's when, for instance, when I have the parents and I have to do like a portrait with more than one dog or 
you know, we're doing uh, a total different vibe that, you know, maybe everybody's in a bench or everybody is like, you know, a little spread around. Um, I use my Nikon uh, 24 120. Okay. That's well, there the we one. go. Linda was asking about lenses and Linda's also asking if you ever crop the images. Uh, no, no, I, I try. And this is one thing that I try to do uh, as much as I possibly can. I try not to edit the photos too much. I try to get the image what it is. And then, yes, look, I'll be lying if I say that, you know, maybe I have to tweak the light a little here and there and, and you know, but uh, most of my images, they're not cropped. They're just, just the way they are. Okay. Now I know we talked about the leash thing a little earlier. Is that most of the time? How What percentage would you say of dogs that you have to put on a leash? If, if it's a dog that's well-behaved, do you let them off the leash or do you always no. require? No, I don't want the responsibility uh, of any dogs, you know, without a leash, unless, unless we are in an area in Central Park that it's all fenced and they have no place to go then you know okay because then you know they're so concentrated on their on the parents and me that they're not even looking around they're just like looking at us but i i i, I get really on earth on earth when i see people you know dogs not being walked on a leash so one of the things when i send you the information about the photo shoots that i do is because everybody always asked me so now I put it there is like oh my god my dog doesn't behave well enough to have him off leash and I'm like they'll have leash that's the one thing that I edit out is the leash so you know the parents can be comfortable uh, I can be comfortable because I think sometimes I get more nervous than than the parents because you know I, I don't want any dog because you know if they see a squirrel they're going to run behind a squirrel you know interesting yeah now, what's what's one breed that you have not photographed that is, is there any breed out there that you, if you could have any breed to photograph that you would want to photograph? Yes, it's, oh my God, uh, I forgot what breed it is, but it's like the very, very big, big, big ones. Um, it, it might come to me, but that's the only dog I have not photographed that I'm dying to. And actually, The Great Danes? Is it the Great Danes? Uh, no, it's not the great things is the they're they have long hair oh, and okay. very very good dogs i just unfortunately can't remember the name right now so we'll put our viewers to the test they, they have a hundred percent success rate in answering what? questions that we can't i think it's the wolfhounds i think wolfhounds. it's a yeah um that's a dog actually uh, a neighbor down the street from me has three and these dogs are like I mean, they're bigger than me. If they stand on two legs. So it's like unbelievable. And uh, I, I really would like because they're very, um, they're very big, but they're very like humble. You know, they walk on the street like, but um, but um, but um, um. <laughs> and I really would love to take a photo of those three dogs walking toward me. And I, oh. I just want to clarify for Ted, who's joining us on Vimeo. Ted, yes, it is a 70 to 200 that Carmen shoots primarily with. Um, so we had a, another question on, on the lens there. Now, Carmen, what is, is there any question that you get more often than not in regards to, is there one question that everyone asks when it comes to taking, whether it's advice or tips? Uh, basically, I think we have covered them all. I think that more than anything, what people are always amazed is how happy the dogs look and how they're just so calm. And, and I think that that's probably the question I get the most, uh, you know, and also, um, uh, like you, I have a lot of people that are just blown out with the action shots uh you know i have i have a little datsun that i photographed that it's literally catching a balloon and he's literally uh six feet from the ground and so how to get those photos and how to make the dogs look so comfortable i think are the, they're the two things that people ask the most <clears throat> okay now we had some we had some uh guesses come in here for what dog it was you referring to we have irish wolfhound Saluki, yep. Yep. 
Was it an Irish wolfhound? Yep, that's it. Thank you, whoever he was. There we go. So we have Chris Jett, and I think our first answer with Irish wolfhound was the event space's very own Scott Jolson, who who called that correctly. Oh, really? Well, thank you, because I um I it just went off my brain. But uh, yeah, they're they're beautiful dogs, and like I said, they're like very boom 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 boom. You know, they don't move too fast. <laughs> Like, we're getting we're getting all these these other breeds in Saluki, Great Pyrenees, Afghan, Bouvier de Flanders, and I'm realizing that I need to get out of New York because I I don't I in the Bronx I see one maybe two breeds. <laughs> I need some variety. You should go to Central Park on a Saturday uh, before nine o'clock in the morning and go around the Great Lawn, all those areas there because it's uh, off leash hours. And you would see so many different breeds that you would be amazed at what you can find in there. Carmen, what, what's the etiquette from a dog owner perspective as far as going up, approaching, asking to take a photo, asking to pet? I know people are very particular. You know, um, I think that the most important thing is ask the owner first. Okay. Actually, uh, one of my very best friends is a sh children's book author and she does books about dogs mostly and sh she has a book called may i pet your dog and it's her dog harry um who was a that soon telling or showing kids what the approach should be um look i'm a dog lover and i hate to say it but i most days out on the street, I smell like every dog because I have so many dogs just rolling over me and kissing me and, you know, playing with me. But I still, if I see your dog and I would love to pet your dog, I ask you first, is it okay if I pet him? Um, some dogs, they look very friendly, but they don't like strangers. And when you try to approach them, they get mad. And, and you have to understand that's their defense mechanism. Um, always, you know, never go like this to a dog, never go like this to a dog, you know, always kind of like put your hand so they can smell you first. And once they get comfortable with you, then you can kind of like pet them a little bit. But, mm. you know, and some people, um, especially now in New York, I have to tell you, Derek, uh, there are so many people that are so scared of losing their dogs because people are grabbing and running with dogs, the small dogs that they're a little cautious and they don't want anybody to touch their dogs. Mm, that's understandable. I, I wouldn't even have even thought about that, but it, obviously in the day and age we're living in, it's a very real yeah. concern. But like I said, you know, you can't just go, oh, let, you know, let me, let me say hello to you because I mean, if you do that to me, I'll punch you because I think you're going to hit me, <laughs> you know, you know? So I, I am, I'm thinking that if you're a dog, you, you just bite my, my finger off. So, you know, always ask first, you know, is it okay? Look, um, like I said, when I started, I will stop people on the street and I would just say, hey, is it okay if I take a photo of your dog? And if they say, oh, I'm so sorry. No, I'm in a hurry. Oh, no problem. Uh, but if not, you know, uh, I always ask because it, it, to, to dog people, their dogs are their children most of the time. So, you know, you have to treat it like that with a lot of respect. Definitely. And our final question of the evening, Ted on Vimeo is asking, do you usually shoot in manual mode? Yeah, all the time. So manual focus, manual everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. Wow. Yep. You're a rare breed. And there's um, not too many people out there shooting in full manual anymore. Yeah, I do manual and I, I sit down and, you know, I look at the light and I play a lot and, uh, you know, the speed of the camera, you know, what I want it to be, um, you know, depending on the pop, I usually shoot a 125, uh, 150, uh, but sometimes I go a little higher if the dog moves a lot, but yeah, I do, I, I photograph in manual, so. Interesting. So for everyone out there watching, there's our challenge. We got to shoot in manual more because you look at these beautiful images <laughs> and... We're all using auto, at least me. Look, I, I'll admit it. I'm, I'm using a, a heck of oh, a lot of auto and aperture priority. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Next time, next time about this, uh, when you come back, you interview me and you, you could ask me the tough questions since apparently you need to be the one hosting. 
Oh, <laughs> well, look, it's it's been such a pleasure. I, I cannot thank you enough for having me and I hope everybody enjoyed it. And if anybody has any other questions, they can go to my Instagram too and, and you know, shoot me a DM and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer the questions. And what is that Instagram? Because, you know, we're, I'm about to give you a live follow right now. Okay, my Instagram, it's NYC Street Dogs. Wonderful. So NYC Street Dogs, you guys heard it here first. There we go. NYC Pet Pawtographer. Carmen, I want to thank you so much. It was such a joy having you on. Thank, thank you, for, you for doing this. And we'll, we're definitely going to have to have you back. And um, it, I'm personally issuing you the mirrorless challenge. I, I got I to gotta see you. I'm going to talk to my man, Jerry Rooney, down there at the Nikon booth and say, did, did anyone named Carmen stop in to look at mirrorless well, bodies? If, if you can arrange for b &H to loan me a camera for a day, that I can go to the park and photograph, then we can do another one of these and I can have a, a, a real comparison because right now I don't know anything about mirrorless. There we go. Look, you know what? I might have to personally take you out in the park one day. That's not and good. there we go. We're, we're going to make it happen. We're going to get Carmen a, a mirrorless body to tool around Central Park. We're, we're going to work something out, Carmen. I, I'm interested to see. And you shoot with my camera. Oh, man. Do I have to shoot on manual? Oh, yeah. I'm just playing. I know how to shoot on manual. Yeah. One more <laughs> thing people that are asking about the lens. Uh, one of the things, as you know, about the 7200, it's a very fast lens, but that lens is all glass. So it's very, very heavy, uh, you know, which, you know, put off a lot of people. But for me, because of the action shots, I think it's, it's the best lens out there to do that. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that information, Carmen. This is this is great. Thank you. Know, you. It's, it's not often we have two pet photography events in back to back weeks, but we got a, a ton of information. So I want to thank you for your time. Uh, we'll be in touch on the sidelines there to get this whole mirrorless thing happen. I'm kind of interested to see. I, I love when people get get to try out some new gear and and uh, see where technology is taking us. So huge thank you again to you, Carmen. A huge thank you also to all of our viewers for all your questions, your wonderful information that you sent in. But that's it. That's all we got for today. Another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space is in the books. We'll catch you all next time.